Marin Green Home Tour. My name is Gretchen Schubeck. I'm the Sustainability Coordinator for the City of Novato, and I'll be your MC. This event was planned and produced by an enthusiastic, passionate group of individuals, city and county staff, and representatives from local, community, and environmental organizations. The tour is a fiscally sponsored project of Sustainable Marin. Many of the team will be active in the chat and during Q&A sessions, answering questions whenever they can and sharing recommendations. Julie Chu is providing essential tech support behind the scenes today. Bob Brown is making sure our presenters and homeowners log in on time. And Amy Kaiser is helping me with hosting duties. This event would, simply would not have been possible without the support of a wide range of local businesses and organizations, as well as local mm -hmm. jurisdictions and public agencies in Marin County. I'd like to give a big shout out to our major sponsors, our fantastic Community Choice Energy Provider, MCE, Marin Water, and the Climate and Energy Partnership. Thank you also to our advocate level sponsors, SolarCraft Clean Energy Solutions, Ungaro and Sons Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, Rock Rabbit's Electrical Electrification App, Biodirectional Energy's EV Battery App, and the County of Marin Sustainability Team. You'll hear a little bit about these services as our program unfolds. Big ups also to these generous supporters of the Marin Green Home Tour, Divine Electric, Marin Realtors, Sustainable Novato, Quick Carbon, Electrify My Home, Hassler Heating and Cooling, and Home Intel. Links to all these, links to all these vital, well-recommended services can be found on the Marin Green Home Tour website, as well in the post-event emails you will receive. This event would not have come together without your support, so thank you. I'll now pass it over to Amy, who will give us a quick preview of our program. Thanks, Gretchen. Hello, everyone. I'm Amy Kaiser, the lucky person who gets to visit all these homes and homeowners in person. Today, you'll see virtual tours of five Marin homes and one rental property. After each tour, the homeowners will pop, lo pop live up on Zoom to answer your questions about their homes. We're also going to have two short essential presentations. Phil Allwitt, the CEO of SolarCraft, will give you solid, up-to-date information on rooftop solar as an investment, which is extremely relevant as energy costs continue to rise. Mark Chabria from the County of Marin's sustainability team will give you very fresh information on where to access rebates and incentives for your green home updates, including the Inflation Reduction Act. He will also turn you on to free planning services. Today's program will be recorded and emailed to everyone who registered within the week. Now Julie is going to tell you how to ask questions. It's Amy. Hi, everyone. I'm Julie Chu from the County of Marin. I'll quickly go over the three Zoom icons that are most important for your viewing experience tonight. Um, so the Q&A fields are specifically for questions that you have for the homeowner or presenter we are highlighting on screen. The chat is for commenting and engaging with other attendees. And the live transcript icon CC in parentheses will allow you to disable or enable the live transcript on your screen. This can be helpful if you're having any trouble hearing the program. Um, after every Q&A or presentation, the homeowners and presenters will be active in the Q&A field to answer your questions. The chat ambassadors will be active there too. Uh, we are very motivated to give you the information you seek. Now I'll turn it back to Gretchen. So a green home is a bridge to our future. People continue to burn fossil fuel, also known as natural gas, in their homes driving climate change. In Marin, climate change brings hotter days, warmer nights, and more fires, floods, drought, pollution, and erratic weather. In the future, as those impacts worsen, we will all need to adapt to stay cool, to resist fire, to keep the power on during outages, to have enough fresh water, and to have places to breathe clean air when the skies fill with smoke. When you green your home, you're both preparing to withstand adversity and creating the possibility of a much better future. By getting off fossil fuels, conserving water, and fire hardening, you are creating benefits for yourself 
but also for the community and our whole ecosystem. When it comes to climate savvy actions to green your home, I like to break it into six categories. These first three are energy, energy related because our gas burning furnaces, water heaters, stoves, and clothes dryers are driving climate change. Taken together, these three strategies will insulate you from PG&E's ever rising rates. Bringing down your energy needs through insulation, LEDs, and Energy Star appliances is key, so don't skip that part. If you can't ditch your gas stove yet, offset your emissions by using an instant pot, portable in induction cooktop, or a toaster oven. This will dramatically improve your indoor air quality. If you don't have rooftop solar, you can still game your energy use to align with maximum solar on the grid. Load shifting means using your energy when it's cheap and the grid is running on lots of California solar. So consider doing your laundry uh, running your dishwasher or charging your EV in the middle of the day if you can't and avoid using energy during the peak hours of 4 to 9 p.m. These last three climate action categories are water conservation, fire hardening, and carbon sequestration. The U.S. in the West is drying out, putting a lot of stress on our water systems, wildlife, ag, forests, and trees. When considering landscaping, think about mulch to hold in moisture and permeable pavers to allow water to percolate down, recharging the groundwater and feeding the deep roots of our trees. Fire hardening is vital for Marin residents, as you know. Cal Fire has a comprehensive guide to fire hardening your property. Even if we stop burning fossil fuels today, we still need to draw down the greenhouse gases that are already in the atmosphere. The best strategies are trees, woody perennials, and compost. Mulch sequesters carbon, carbon, whereas gravel depletes carbon in soil over time. Thanks, Amy. I want to drive home an important point about dirty energy. The use of gas in our buildings, both our homes and businesses, is the second largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Marin. This gas pollutes at every stage, from the well to your kitchen, where it's linked to asthma and respiratory disease. Because of this pollution, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District is implementing new regulations that will require natural gas furnaces and water heaters to be replaced with electric alternatives when they burn out. These regulations will kick in in the next three to five years. In the meantime, the electricity on our power grid continues to get cleaner. Most Marin residents get their power from MCE, and the majority of energy that MCE sources for the grid comes from renewable solar, wind, and hydroelectric. That's why electrification makes so much sense, even if you don't have solar. If you want, right now, you can opt up to MCE's Deep Green program, which is 100% renewable clean energy from California and nothing else. It's super easy and costs just a few extra bucks a month. Now we're gonna play a brief message from our sponsor, MCE. More than a decade ago, Californians started a climate action movement and launched MCE, the state's first community choice energy provider, offering an alternative to traditional fossil fuel-based electricity. MCE's locally controlled, cost-competitive electricity options are up to 100% renewable, kicking fossil fuels to the curb, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and creating clean energy jobs. MCE customers are reinvesting in their community, putting the power back in your hands. Learn more at mcecleanenergy.org. Now we're going to run. Now we're going to run a quick message about green home opportunities from Marin Water. Oops, I think that oh, slide is in the it. wrong place. <laughs> now we're going to. Okay. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get started touring Marin Homes. For our first video tour, we're heading to Lucinda's Bungalow in Gersel Park in San Rafael. As a realtor, Lucinda has a unique perspective on how these green upgrades can increase your home's value. I'm Lucinda Otto. My husband and I bought this house in 2019. 
Uh, it was built in 1924. We bought this house because we love the neighborhood. This is Gerstle Park in San Rafael. It's a mix of big old houses, smaller older houses, apartment buildings, and what that means is there's a real mix of people, which is something that we really like and value. One of the things that guided this project is we love older homes and we also love sustainability and energy efficiency and we wanted to find a way to marry those two things. This house had been upgraded over time, the previous owners had taken great care of it, but there was still a lot of opportunity to make it more sustainable. So we gave ourselves a five-year project and we called it the 100th birthday project because we realized there were five years until it was gonna be 100 years old. The goal at the time was, okay, we're gonna to try to get third-party green certification. So given that we weren't quite sure where to start, we got an energy assessment with Mickey Souza of Energineers. She came and looked at the house and then gave us a report about what, what are the best next steps to take and what would give us the most bang for our buck. So come on in and let me show you what we've done inside. This is the original part of the house that was built in 1924. There was an expansion to the back that was built in the 50s. So the windows when we bought the house were the original 1924 windows and they were really beautiful and matched the house perfectly. But it was also really hot in here in the summertime. I wanted wood to replace them as much as I could like for like. I looked into getting prefab window replacements, but because the framing around the windows is original old growth redwood, any kind of standard replacement was gonna require tearing all that out. So I had these windows custom made by Wood Windows and Doors in San Pablo, the guys are great, and shockingly, it was less expensive than doing full standard replacement windows would have been. Come into my all electric kitchen. This kitchen was like this when we bought the house. The homeowners, previous owners had done a beautiful job. The only change we made was, this is a 36 inch wide range. It was gas and so we replaced it with an induction. There are not a lot of choices for induction in 36 inches wide. The standard width is 30 inches. So that's kind of nice because it narrows down what you have to pick from, but that was a challenge that we faced. We're happy with the Bosch model that we picked. There's an electric washer and dryer in here. But most of the time when we dry our clothes, we use what is called the rotary lift o -matic, which is a clothesline that uh, we keep folded up, but then it can expand it when we want to use it. And we keep it out in the driveway because that's the hottest, sunniest spot. One of the recommendations from the energy assessment was to, rather than putting in air conditioning, we could put in what's called a whole house fan. And it's right up here in the ceiling in our hallway. This is the controller for it. As soon as the temperature gets cooler outside than it is inside, you turn on this fan and it draws the cooler air into the house and uh, is remarkably effective at cooling down the house quickly just using nature's air conditioning. Another project we did was renovate this bathroom. Um, it was very small and original from the 1950s and didn't have any heating or any ventilation. It had a small window. The whole house had original galvanized plumbing, uh, which is prone to breaking and leaks and had just you know, worn out over time. So we replaced all of the plumbing in the whole house with copper. We um, put electric radiant heat under the floor, which was fantastic, actually not that expensive. And we also installed a ventilation fan and a larger window. Let's head outside. When we bought the house, there were already these two additional buildings outside. That was an office, and this originally was the one car garage. That is my real estate office. I'm a certified California green business running out of that office. And this is my husband's office that we also use as a music studio. This space had no heating and cooling and we were using space heaters and an old clunky air conditioner and it was incredibly suck of electricity. So we put in the Mr. Cool. This is probably one of the most inexpensive ways that you can have a heat pump. We actually bought this unit from Home Depot. I think it was like $1,500. And it's called the Mr. Cool DIY. This is miraculous at the change of the experience of being in this space. So welcome to our office and music studio. This is the 
where the music magic happens right over here and this is one of our two home offices and the unit that uh, connects to the outside unit this is the inside part of it and it both heats and cools the space and it has a remote control and it even works with an app on your phone so you can warm it up before you come into work for the day this was a old concrete patio here and these brick things were probably one of those old brick fireplaces or barbecues that used to be really popular in the 1940s our gardener and his family they came and they took out the old concrete patio they built the boxes so we could grow vegetables and cutting flowers out here and then they replaced it with permeable paving this neighborhood's actually in a flood zone drainage is very very important so the permeable pavers allow water to soak down into the ground as opposed to running off onto our neighbor's property and actually over here this is not connected yet but Marin Water has a program where these are recycled uh, barrels that are from EO products which is a B Corp based in San Rafael they gave these barrels for free to Marin Water Marin Water is giving them free to customers and so we're going to be capturing water off the garage roof and using it for the garden. This is where our solar power comes down from the panels on our roof, connects all down here, and then it goes off to the electrical panel through this conduit here. There is a thing called Energy Sage that is a program of the Department of the United States Department of Energy. You go to their website, you put in your energy needs, they go out and find quotes for you, and then you can talk to a real life person, you know, you have a Zoom with this person who goes through each quote and helps you kind of compare them apples to apples and talks about, you know, what the warranties and what they're offering and what makes it best for you. We have a nine kilowatt system, which is a large system. It's more than we needed at the time. We wanted to get everything all at once. We got a really good deal on the financing and it's sized so that we can have two uh, electric cars that we charge off the system, plus eventually a heat pump for the rest of the house. This is our uh, EV charger. We put it in before we even got an EV. Um, we had the electrical work done at the same time that the electrician came to do the work for the induction stove, which is really nice if you can put projects together. It's less expensive that way. We choose to charge it during the sunniest part of the day because that's when our solar generates the most energy. The last thing I want to talk about is the third-party green certification. With the Pearl gold plus solar certification, you get a copy of something called the Green and Energy Efficient Appraisal Addendum, which is put out by the National Appraisal Institute. Most appraisers are not skilled in valuing these green energy efficient upgrades. What the addendum does is it goes to the appraiser, it's on the forms the appraiser is familiar with, it's on the forms the bank accepts as part of the appraisal. Depending on what's on that appraisal, it can increase the value of your house by two to 10% in terms of what the bank might be willing to loan on it. That's the way a buyer can manage to pay more money for a house with green upgrades. So if you have a house where you've done a lot of green upgrades and you want to know how to do that, talk to your friendly neighborhood green realtor and I can help you figure that out. Now we're going to have, we have the opportunity to connect with Lucinda. And um, Lucinda, I wanted to ask you, um, I was really interested in your Mr. Cool uh, heat pump. Um, so Mr. Cool is an inexpensive mini split uh, that some people install as a DIY, DIY project. Uh, who installed yours? Did you do it yourself? Um, and if not, what did it cost you? We did not do it ourselves. Um, thank you, by the way, for having us. This is great. It's super well organized. I'm really happy to be part of it. Um, uh, no, we did not do it ourselves. Many people could do it themselves, but not we're not those people. So we um, hired a, a hand, just a handyman that um, I use for a lot of things for my clients. Um, they came. Um, we did have a licensed electrician. We had to run electrical. It only uses 110 current. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, which is nice. Cause it's only just the one space. Um, okay. so, um, so we had to run the electrical and then, um, the handyman just installed the, um, you know, the unit and ran the, the, the pipes and stuff like that. I think all in with the cost of the unit and the electrical and the installation, it was under $5,000. Oh, great. Excellent. I think Amy might be pulling some questions from our chat. What have, what have I you got, do have Amy? I questions. Great. Hey, just a, just a reminder, if you have questions for Lucinda, put it in the Q&A rather than the chat. 
but I did see one in the chat asking you, um, who did you get your whole house fan from and who installed it? Um, we used to, con I looked at a lot of different contractors. I kind of called all the people on the Bay Ren list and all of that, just, just cause I was interested in vetting everything that I could find out there. Um, and I used, a a contractor in San Francisco called building efficiency. Um, he does, he does great work for, you know, everybody at both in San Francisco and in Marin. And he purchased the whole house fan for me. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know where exactly that came from. Great. And a question, is there a lot of permitting involved in these upgrades? Yeah, I mean, you have to pull a permit to put in new windows. Um, we didn't do, like, for example, the windows on our bedroom side of our house were double hung windows, and we couldn't replace those like for like because of the new permit issues around egress, um, which were not in place in 1924. So we did make some changes there. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for we had to get electrical permits to do. Yeah, yeah, there is some permitting issues. It's all pretty over the counter. There was nothing we had to wait for or go through a whole lengthy process. Great. So uh, someone wanted to know who replaced your galvanized pipes. I used um, a plumber um, called Zaragoza Plumbing. Z-A-R-A-G-O-Z-A, -A -A, Zaragoza Plumbing. Great guys. And... Uh, Larry asks, I understand that Mr. Cool comes pre-charged with refrigerant. Do you know which kind of refrigerant is used in the Mr. Cool? It's a good question. Um, I don't. I looked into that. Um, I learned about Mr. Cool from my brother, who's an environmental attorney. So I didn't, I figured if he said it was good, <laughs> I didn't look that closely, to be honest. Um, but um they don't all come pre-charged. It depends on the length of the pipes that you, or the length of the the run of the lines. So um, that's something to look at when you're uh, figuring out for your own property. So um, you are, you're considered a green realtor. Is there like a place where people can find green realtors? And also someone wanted to make sure they knew your last name because they wanted to reach out to you. Yay. <laughs> My last name's Otto, O-T-T-O. -T -T I work for Vanguard Properties. Um, there is, oh, so being a green realtor means you are a special certification from the National Association of Realtors. So I do annual trainings and I have this um, higher level of certification than other realtors around this. Um, there is a database of green realtors. I think there's only three in the Bay Area. Um, mm. there, there's not very many that have gone or, and th there are some that have been certified, but they don't actively practice it. I, I do it, you know, I, I, I care about sustainability and I also find it personally interesting. So. Um, so Teresa asks, it sounds like you decided to do the heat pump room by room. Oh, uh, wait, it's, I, it, you decided to do the heat pump just in your studio and that you'll eventually install a heat pump for the whole house. Can you share the reasoning behind why you're doing things in this order? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we have a gas furnace that's pretty high efficient. In the main house, there was a gas furnace that's already pretty high efficiency and it's not very old and it works great. And um, and it's expensive to get a heat pump for the whole house. So um, so we decided, you know, we had to prioritize projects over this five year time span. So the garage was really the, you know, the it was just unbearable to work in there in the summer and the afternoon, it's just too hot. So um, that was kind of where the greatest need was. And when we found this option that was so affordable, we decided to go with that first. And I'm glad we did actually, it really, it's a, it, it turned out, it's a great project. So the last question I'm gonna ask you is to restate the third party green certification. Yeah, so that's a program called Pearl Certification. Pearl, like a like an oyster pearl. It's a national program. It's it's much more well known outside of California, but it's it's getting more of an inroad in California. Um, but it's it's pretty well known as a Green Party certification. Um, I'm, I'm, if there's time, I'm happy to talk more about how someone would do that. It's pretty quick. That's great. So um, we're going to move on to the next part of the program. But if Lucinda, if you could. Um, bop down into the Q&A and there's some questions that um, you can engage with people and give them more information. Sure. Great. Okay. I'd be happy Thank to. Thanks so for much. having me. All right. Take okay. care. Hey, so, thanks so much, Lucin Lucinda. Um, now we are going to share a quick message about green home opportunities from Marin Water.
Okay, now we're going to head over to Frank's home in Tiburon with the killer view of Angel Island. Frank's home is technically a renovation, but it's almost entirely new construction. Hi, I'm Frank Levinson, and we're in Tiburon, California. This house was, I purchased in 2005, and it had been here since 1971. So it was time for a major remodel, which we did. We essentially lifted the house even off the foundation, replaced the foundation, and then replaced everything but a few two-befores. So the house was effectively new at that time. And we wanted it to be as bold a statement and sustainable living as we could. So let's go take a tour, and we'll show you as many things about that as we can. My PhD is in astronomy, and so when I built this house, I wanted to have it be as forward-looking in technology as possible. There's actually two separate homes here. One's a two-bedroom apartment with two baths, and the other's a three-bedroom home where I'm, my wife and I live. That means we have two separate solar arrays, two separate power meters, two separate power walls, so that the place operates independently. The house, as you can see, is situated on the San Francisco Bay with beautiful views and decks throughout. In fact, it's got very good acoustics even. We hold house concerts here periodically, uh, three or four a year, and it's a fun place where everybody likes to come. So come on in, let me give you a tour. Welcome to my living room. It's a great room where we have both the kitchen, the living room, and dining room, as you can see and of course all the glass so we can look out and see all of the nature that's around us. All of these are double paned with argon in the middle so nicely insulated. More importantly the house could be quite hot in the summer but it's not. We use passive solar principles to both make the house warmer in winter but cooler in the summer. To do this there's a an eave out here that extends out, the roof extends out over our deck and in the summer when the sun is high the deck is shaded and the house is shaded but in the winter as the sun goes closer to the horizon the sunlight pours in and heats this room up. If you look up, there's track lighting in here, and all of it uses LEDs. Originally, when this was built, LED lighting was just coming out, and the MR16 was not really available yet as a footprint. The room with 20 of these things had 50 watt incandescent lights in it for basically one kilowatt every time we lit up this room. Today, with five watt LEDs, it's uh, less than one tenth of that power. We've embraced a lot of energy saving principles as well as energy generating principles throughout the house. Let's go look at the apartment. Welcome to the apartment. I wanted to show you, this is the thermostat for the apartment. Right now we have it off because no one's staying here. It's a way of saving energy, of course. The apartment produced more energy because of the solar that we've allocated to it than it, than it uses throughout the year. So this is a net energy positive even though we charge the car off of the apartment circuits as well. The house is heated by three separate heat pump systems, all ducted moving air. Here's one of the vents for that, and the reason we chose to do the three separate systems is to be able to control the energy usage. So one is for the great room, which you've seen before, and then one is for the apartment, which we've just visited, and then the last is for the master bedroom and my office. Many times in the winter, the sun is quite quite bright, it's still sunny here in California, and the passive solar allows us by late morning for the house to fully warm up even passively. Normally tours of my house don't include the, the bathroom, but welcome to our bathroom, where we have electric shades like we have throughout the house, but it's visible here uh, to, to both control the, the energy and light input, but also low flow shower heads and water fixtures that are representative of what's throughout the house. This is the software that tracks the solar PV for the house. It's showing you a whole year's production for 2022. As you can see, it's, it's minimal in December and January when the sun time is the shortest, and it maximizes itself in the summer months, May, June, and July. There's a day from the sun rise in the morning to the sunset in the evening. I'm gonna to try to show you how we've also monitored the water use at our house and made it much more effective. This is my water bill from 2021 and really it represents all the years before that. We have cisterns 
and we have a drip system, but neither were working properly. And it was really challenging to try to get it to work. In 2023, while we were trying to have the system repaired, the people doing it left two things open by accident for just two days. And we blew through more water than we would in three or four years in a two day period. That's this large blue spike here. But we were able to get it fixed. And now, because of we have what we have installed on the house, monitors the house continuously. The system is now fully monitored. And if anything happens like that disaster a year or two ago, the house shuts itself off from water until we fix it. This is our, our EV and this is the charging station that we had put in. It's a little different than the normal Teslas. It's, it's an amount that we had designed here. It's a little easier to use. So while the solar PV is on the roof, let's go first see where the equipment does that matches it to the grid and does our battery storage. These are our electric power meters for the, for the house and the apartment and they're read automatically. They're not, no one comes down here and reads anymore. They're all read by, by uh, radio waves and on, over the network. Then there's shutoffs to keep people protected if there was ever a fire here. Then there's the inverters for the house. And down here is the inverter for the apartment. And then there's the power walls for the house and the power walls for the apartment. And with that, we can live off grid pretty much. So these systems are networked in a way that they can participate in what's called a virtual power plant. What that means is if there are 10,000 of these systems around in this area or Northern California, they can take them all and make them work simultaneously together on a very challenging day when the power starts going down from the sun. All these power walls, not just these, these here at this house, but 10,000 from all of our neighbors in Northern California can all turn around and feed power back to the grid and act as one system, which is about the same size as a real power plant. And as such, we get paid for that power when we ship it back. And, and we get in those moments specifically, we get paid way more than the normal cost of a kilowatt hour. When these participate in a virtual power plant, it's up to $2 per kilowatt hour. Many times these houses will have large swimming pools, which are difficult in terms of energy to heat. This is a treadmill swimming pool, so I can still swim 100 yards, a mile, whatever is up. It's much less cost to heat because it's well insulated. And the same thing is true for the hot tub. We found it was very difficult to do drip on a very steep hillside, too much back pressure. So instead, we installed a watering robot called Otto, and it's worked terrific for us. It goes back and forth. You can program it for even a complex area like we have down below. It knows the terrain, and it knows where to reach each of these things. And it waters all of the hillsides that you see, and these are all full with, with drought-tolerant plants. The house is located on a very steep hill where the elevation changes probably by more than 100 feet. The house has a rainwater collection system that ends up in cisterns down below, which we'll see. These gutters are tied into that system, so they come from up here and down. We can trace them down as we go down the stairs to see it all. These are the rainwater collection cisterns, and they take their water from the, the gutters that you saw coming down. This is a, a, a clear pipe that shows me the, the level of the water, and at the end of our season, the cisterns now are down to about here, whereas it, in May, they were completely full. So we're, we're draining them down and they'll, they'll finish the season uh, with still some water left in them before the rains start up again. Thanks for coming with me on this sustainability tour of my house. I hope some things that we've learned that we've tried now to share with you will be helpful for you as well. Gretchen, you're muted. Well, that's embarrassing. I was muted. Apologies <laughs> for that. Um, I will repeat myself. Uh, thank you, Frank, for sharing your magnificent uh, home with us. Uh, it's super special. And we're grateful that um, that we could share it with, uh, with our viewers here today. Um, really interested in the virtual power plant program that that pays uh, you to use your battery power when the grid has extra demand. Can you um, tell us a little bit more about that? Do you do? How do you? How did you? Um, how do you set the amount that they take, and and how often does that actually happen? Well, Tesla Tesla has a, a way to, to to talk with each of the power walls mm -hmm. as they set them up at your house, and that they also monitor your solar activity as well. So 
if they ask you, do you want to sign up or not? If you say no, then it's not done. But if you say yes, then they bring you in through software and and and, and do the coordination. And you can see where they're headed with this. It's a, you know, there perhaps there are 10,000 power walls throughout California now, but you could see there could be a million of them at some point in the future. And if that was the case, uh, the, 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 the amount of power that could be pushed back could be several real power plants. Um, so, uh, and, and currently they do pay $2 a kilowatt hour, which is, as you know, it's almost 10 times what's normal. That's very impressive. Wow. Yeah. Amy, do you have so, some questions from the Yeah, there's a lot right? of questions coming through about your uh, rainwater catchment system. Um, Teresa wants to know if the cisterns provide gray water or potable water as well. When we did it, they, they were not able to supply water back into the house. They were only permitted to be able to, to supply water to the garden. We do stay a tier one user now all year round. Uh, which I think is, is for the size yard we have, I think is 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 really some, saying something. But but uh, no, we were not permitted to, to to be able to feed it back even for gray water at the time. So we did what we could. So Netta and John are both interested in the volume of the cisterns. Fifteen um, fifteen thousand gallons. Uh, seventy five thousand seventy five hundred each. So a total and where of, and um, where you were able to get them. Uh, I don't remember. It was twenty years ago, okay. but but I think we've had it for twenty years. Yeah, we've had. But it's 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 the solar we installed started working right away. It's taken me a long time to master the water system to the point I have it today. Um, so I I would say that that that's been a that's been a, a fun thing. I mean, I'm sort of a nerdy guy, so <laughs> that's been fun. But to to see them to see them work that way has has been has been a, a challenge. But now they're really doing it. So David is interested in the name of the smart sprinkler, and I'm actually kind of interested because you call it a robot, like that the smart sprinkler involves you programming it to really be specific on your slope, planted slope. So could you tell us a little bit about that, uh, the name of the, the robot again, and also how you go about um, programming it? It's called Auto, O-T-O, and it's a startup, I think, out of Canada. I, I had one that had a problem. They were quick to, to make sure it worked again. You take your cell phone and it interfaces to it. It's pretty straightforward. And you describe to it an area and you, you have it trace out the area where you want it to water. And then it will go and fill in everything in between. It can do a point water on a tree, like a, like a, an apple or pear or cherry tree or apricot. It can do a line if you have a row of, of hedges or, or roses or it can do a whole area and it fills it all in. Uh, the software on the phone I find is very easy to use and it lets you know what it's doing every day that it turns itself on. So Michelle says, I've been afraid to sign up for the virtual power plant. Are you not afraid that you'll run out of power yourself? An earlier question said the same thing. You can tell it how much of your power you want it to use. Are you willing to give back 30% or 60%? I typically give back 75% or so. I don't give back 100% though. And what and I and I can tell you for sure cuz I've checked it. It absolutely does uh exactly what you tell it. Mm. It, it you know if you say I'll give you 60% back, you'll have 40% there in the morning when the sun comes up or whatever. So Stephanie has in phase batteries, not Tesla power walls, and um she just wondered is the virtual power plant available only with tesla or do you know if it's available with other battery i don't know systems? but i wouldn't be surprised if it, if the other groups would want to try to do it but they would need would in phase would have to try to to to, to do that or whoever the supplier was tesla is able to do it um but only for tesla power walls as, okay as part of the grouping so thank you so much, Frank. I don't know if you have a few minutes before you have to fly out, but there's some questions that I didn't get to before we have to move on with the program. So if you want to um, jump down into the Q&A, there might be some that you could answer. I'd be glad to. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Frank. Uh, now a word from one of our other sponsors. Home electrification projects like installing heat pumps are good for your wallet, health, and the planet billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars are available right now in incentives, but claiming the money can be daunting. 
Rocket Rabbit is an AI powered software that helps local installers find, bundle, and claim rebates for homeowners. Intensive incentives make electrification affordable, and Rock Rabbit makes incentives easy. Learn more at rockrabbit.ai. So a lot has happened in California rooftop solar in the last two years, and much of it is super confusing. We figured it was a good time to invite an expert who could give us the most up-to-date information on rooftop solar. Does it still make sense? Is it still a great investment? An industrial designer by training, Phil Allwit is the CEO of SolarCraft, one of the largest green tech employers in the North Bay. Welcome, Phil. Great, thank you, Gretchen. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. If um, well, it says I'm not able to share my screen, <laughs> um, so hopefully, I don't know if you're able to switch that over, and then I'll um, I'll speak. But I'll as that's uh, happening. I will um, just give a quick intro. Yeah, I, I am the CEO of SolarCraft. Um, I, I've been in the solar industry for uh, uh, almost 20 years now. And, um, you know, I was this wonderful armchair environmentalist for years before I got into this. And um, let's see. Okay, now I think I'm able to share my screen with everybody. So let me just do this real quickly. Okay, are you able to see the screen here? We are. Perfect. Okay, great. So again, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm just going to do a super quick intro. I'm, I'm the guy in the middle there. Um, SolarCraft has been around 40 years. We're an employee-owned uh, company here in Marin, serve just, just the North Bay, and we're really the neighborhood um, solar company, installed about 10,000 systems. So I, what I'm going to do is just go over a whole bunch of aspects of um, of solar, and it's going to be a quick nine minutes here. So um, I'll I'll expect a bunch of uh, Q and A afterward. I do want to start by just giving a really brief under uh, a brief description of solar. Now, most people know generally what it is, where um, solar comes down and hits panels, and it converts the sun's energy into usable electric energy in the homes. It um, runs through a bunch of electronics and electrical components that converts it. And energy from the sun that you're able to use directly in your house, you use. If there's excess energy, it goes into a battery because batteries are typically installed for almost all solar systems nowadays um, due to various new changes with PG&E and, and the utilities. Um, that's the case. Once the batteries are full and um, energy from the batteries can be used your sun's energy from the batteries can be used at night and times, you know, when the sun isn't shining. So it's really wonderful. And if the batteries are full and the, and you don't need any more, their excess energy can be sent back to the grid for a little bit of credit, but um, from pg and &E or the utility, but not that much anymore. So um, let's see, let's talk about some good situations for solar. Most obvious one, sun. You need some good sun. Um, in most cases, um, solar works, right? If there are some trees, um, if you have decent exposure, solar still could be good. If you're in the middle of, um, you know, in the middle of the woods, well, that might not be optimal. But there are a lot of cases and a lot of, of electronics nowadays that enable solar to be very viable in most situations. Um, the other uh, thing is space, right? You have to have enough room on your roof for the solar panels, but you also have to have room for all of the equipment. And there are all kinds of regulations and setbacks from windows and doors and vents. So where you might want the batteries and the equipment, a really good solar company would come out and guide you as to what really is legitimate. Um, and what will pass, uh, you know, pass the inspections for the building department. So that's really important. And it's important that you that you work with a solar company that is knowledgeable, is technical, technically inclined um, to help you in, in those ways. Um, and uh, other other things to look for are, you know, you just really want great communication. You're making an investment uh, for something that's going to last 20, 25, 30 years. So you want to be able to, to um work with a company that's going to be around for the long term and help support you 
as well. Why solar? There are three primary reasons that people choose solar. Number one, save money. People are sick and tired of PG&E just raising the rates. And we get a ton of customers ourselves um, where that is the primary reason. They're just tired of PG&E and they, um, they want to um, say, you know, save some money. Another great, great reason, my primary reason is um, to uh, offset carbon emissions. Uh, climate change is a massive problem. We all know it. And the little bit that each of us could do really accumulates and makes a big difference. So um, that's a that's a huge reason. The third reason I have here is um, during power outages, you could have a battery for backup power and you could have a, some resiliency to keep your lights on, maybe keep the Wi-Fi going um, as long as the, uh, you know, the general uh, uh, Internet in the region is working. Um, and keep your appliances going so you can li still live comfortably. So those are the three primary reasons to go solar. So the next question is, is it a good investment? And the answer is absolutely. You know, um, you know again, PG&E is our, our, our best worst partner, <laughs> if I can put it that way. PG&E has been raising the rates. And the more they raise the rates, the better the economics are for solar, the faster you can pay, pay off your system. So it's really a wonderful um, thing for those who have solar when PG&E raise, <laughs> raises rates. It's uh, it's a shame for everyone else. And that's, that's a real bummer. Um, so the other thing is the federal government does provide a 30% uh, tax credit. So they pay for 30% of your system. Uh, that's huge. And that's going to keep going for another eight years or so. And maybe they'll extend it. They have extended it in the past. The, it's it's really important to get a quality system as well. You have this long-term investment and um, look at the long-term investment because you're going to save tens or possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of time. And if you have to spend an extra, you know, couple thousand bucks at the beginning and it lasts and it doesn't go down and you know the company behind you is, is there to support you, it's going to save you a bundle of money. So that's really important. Um, systems uh, generally are paid off in about five to eight years uh, nowadays. So when you, you know, the money you save from not paying the utility will pay for that system in about five to eight years. So how do you pay for this system? There are four common ways to pay for the system. Um, one is cash. Um, it's, you get the best return on your investment that way. Another is take a loan, debt financing. A lot of people use their home equity line. Others um, use a third party. Um, most solar companies do partner with uh, various entities and banks to provide some loans out there. There are a couple other ways to pay for the system as well. Uh, one is a lease and the other is a power purchase agreement or PPA. And both of those, um, you could actually put no money down, but over the course of the term of that lease or PPA agreement, you end up paying a lot more money. So you might pay two, three times the amount of money over that period, but you didn't put, you didn't put any money down to start with. So, um, you know, cash is really good and debt is really good. And if you absolutely don't want to put any money down, then leases and PPAs are an option for you as well. So I'm just going to end here with a nice Halloween picture of what could possibly go wrong, because people always ask us, you know, they, everyone has concerns. It's a big project. Solar now is a, very, is a fairly relatively mature industry, right? The attachments to the roofs are solid. Um, we don't have a lot of, of incidents. There um, are uh, things to look out for. Uh, when you are looking for solar, your electrical panel may need... Um, some adjustments, it might need to, need, need to be upgraded to support the amount of energy that you want to put in. Um, it might be a, an old electrical panel. Um, you know, uh, the uh, roof on your house, it hopefully is in good structural shape. Um, most solar companies do a very thorough invest, investigation of the roof and the structure itself. And there are things underneath the roof that sometimes you don't see. It's most construction is pretty predictable, but not all of it. So there are some surprises, but for the most part, they're very rare. And so, solar is a very solid, um, 
you know, construction uh, process nowadays. And, um, you know, sy systems and manufacturers have really got it down uh, quite well. So there's not, not a whole lot. Um, one thing I would say that if you do go for a lease or a PPA, if you're buying or, or let's say you're buying a house and there's solar on the roof, make sure that that lease or PPA does not have a lien on the house. That's something that we hear about quite often. Um, and that then people do run into problems that way. So um, that's a quick overview. And, um, you know, I'll take questions if uh, if there are. Thanks. Um, thanks so much, Phil, for um, for that wonderful presentation and high level, but also enough detail to uh, to to give us a good sense of the landscape and the solar market. Um, Phil, if you want to drop down into the uh, Q and A, uh, sure. I'm sure there are some questions for you there. Really, really appreciate you being with us tonight. Great. Now we're going to visit Sue's home in San Anselmo. Sue is a strong community advocate who's involved in many community level sustainability initiatives. She's also terrific at finding and using rebates and incentives for her green home upgrades. Hi, my name is Sue Saunders and we moved here in 1996. Um, it was a new home and we wanted San Anselmo because of the schools and it's such a beautiful town. Uh, we've lived here 28 years and we raised our children here. My main motivation for doing an all electric home is to get rid of natural gas, which is 90% methane. And methane is 70 times more powerful than carbon at trapping heat, which is driving climate change. My second reason was health. And we know that using a gas range or having natural gas appliances in your home can release toxic chemicals that are very harmful, to, especially to people with lung problems. And my third reason is comfort. The heat pump that keeps the air quality in our house is amazing. I am comfortable all the time. And sometimes I walk outside and it's 90 degree heat or it's really cold and I'm shocked because it's so comfortable inside. You'll notice that our front yard and our backyard are barked and we were able to do this with a generous rebate from Marin Water and we were very concerned about drought which we know we're going to have droughts and extreme events of rain so we wanted to make sure that we weren't going to waste water. And so one thing we wanted to make sure that when we got our heat pump that it wasn't the energy wasn't going to escape so we did extra insulation in the attic and then also below in the crawl space. And we did this with generous rebates from Bayren. And then we were also able to take a $1,200 tax credit for doing the insulation. So come on in. So once we knew that we had the dual plane windows in place and we did more insulation to make sure it was up to code, we knew we were ready to get rid of natural gas or methane as I like to call it, and that we were ready to do whole home electrification. So this is my husband, Joe Saunders, and we um, were not exactly on the same page about the induction cooktop. And, you know, for years I've done the cooking and cooked on a, uh, a gas uh, stovetop, gas range. I had no idea that all those years I was breathing poisonous gases, and so was the whole family. This one made no noise, and so I was finally won over, and now I really like it. It'll boil water and really fast maybe a minute. It makes perfect oatmeal. I'm used to cooking with it now. Uh, it's great for pasta. Anything boiling is great. I really like it. So the one thing I, I really like about the range too is it's clean. The gas range just had would get gunk inside and it just always looked dirty. And this all I have to do is wipe it off with a sponge with a little bit of soap on it and it looks great all the time. One of the reasons we were able to afford the home hole electrification and specifically our last item, which was the induction range, was because of the California smart homes, 
where they give you extra money if you do whole home electrification. And so for 2024, it's an extra $4,250, so $4,250. We also got a rebate from, another rebate from Bayren. We also got a rebate from Electrify Marin. And then we got the $1,200 tax credit from the Inflation Reduction Act. I'm on the San Anselmo Climate Action Commission, and one of our big pushes is to reduce the use of plastic. And so we pass out these produce bags. So this is what a heat pump looks like in your home. It's your regular vent, and it's bringing out cool or hot air. You know, Electrify My Home was so helpful to me. Larry Waters, you know, was get in contact with me whenever there was a great rebate. Um, I initially went to Quit Carbon, who was very helpful in letting me know what the process was and how they could help. So that was a great resource. The other fantastic resource is the Switches On. They have every rebate, um, incentive, tax credit listed on one website. So I knew where I could go and find out exactly how much I could get to electrify my home. So this is my all-electric washing machine and dryer. And then we replaced the vinyl on the floor with marmoleum, which is made from linseed oil and other natural resources, instead of vinyl, which is made from fossil fuels. And so this is a mini split, which we had installed because this room just bakes in the summer. It gets the direct light, so it gets really warm even at night. So we didn't want to cool the whole house just to cool this one room. So we got a mini split installed by Electrify My Home. And it's as easy as using this remote, which you know you can just go to cool and you can raise and lower the temperature as you want it. So it's a really nice feature to have. So one thing we wanted to do was make sure we did as much fire hardening as we could. So we installed Vulcan vents, which are uh, fireproof vents, because that's one of the main ways it gets into your house, a fire nearby. And one of the things our home inspection report said was that you don't want any wooden gates or fences touching your home. And then we also use these rain barrels. So during the winter, when there's the uh, heavy rains, catch the rain in these rain barrels and then use it to water our outdoor plants. So this is part of what the electric heat pump looks like outside. And this bigger unit feeds all the vents in the house. And then the mini split that is upstairs in the master bedroom is fed by this smaller unit. So this is part of my solar system, which we installed in 2019. Anything electric I do, I try to do between 10 and four, especially my electric vehicles, because charging at night is actually 10 times as carbon intensive as charging during the day. So behind me are two electric vehicles, um, which will only drive all electric. I'm never going back to gas. But for shorter trips, I try to use my bike. So we have two electric vehicles. Um, one of the reasons we got the Ionic 5 is that it has this capability called bi-directional charging. So it allows you to use the battery to power appliances in your home. So I have this handy adapter. You simply plug it in to where the charging outlet is, just like that. Then it has a plug that you can put in durable, very strong electric extension cord. And then we run it into the house and we are able to put in our coffee maker. We have a double induction burner that's specifically for power outages. And it's just a great feature. This is the heat pump water heater. The heat pump water heater and the heat pump are so much more efficient than gas. They use, some say, 300% less energy. And it also comes with an inner air filter, which is great for, you know, inside air. It's really clean. And then also, if there's wildfire smoke, which we have had several times, it will clean the air and keep the air safe inside. So that's a really nice feature. So in closing, I just want to say that I'm really ecstatic to have an all-electric home and to not be supporting fossil fuels anymore. I feel safer. I feel more comfortable in my home. I feel better about taking climate action. So it's an exciting time to be doing this. And the great way to learn about all these rebates is to go to the switcheson.org. 
And as soon as the California rebates are released, those will be on there as well. So keep checking and happy electrifying. Sue, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, for everything you do in the community and your, your activism uh, in San Anselmo. I know um, residents there are so lucky to have you. Um, I wanted to just ask you quickly about the biodirectional uh, charging is so interesting and definitely the way of the future. Um, but there are only a few EVs on the market that have the ability to do uh, biodirectional charging, uh, where they serve as backup battery and send electricity to uh, devices or appliances. Do you happen to know which EVs can do that and uh, are more coming on the market? Yes. Well, um, I want to make sure you can hear me okay. We can hear you okay. Great, right. great. Well, so bi-directional charging just means that the, the manufacturer of your uh, electric vehicle has allowed you to use your battery to power your home. And, you know, there's different types um, of bi-directional charging. So there's two, which one of which is mine, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and then there's the Kia EV6. So both of those do what was shown in my video. You can plug into there and run an extension cord and plug in appliances during an outage or you know, if you're camping. Um, the second kind of bi-directional charging is it's called vehicle to home. So maybe you can use it to back up your solar or your clean energy that it's more clean during the day. So you back that energy up and then you use it during the expensive four to nine period, you will be using your electric vehicle to power your home, completely power your home. So those um, are just, you know, there's the Ford Lightning, there is the new um, uh, Chevy Silverado electric truck, there is the uh, Kia EV9, and then the Volkswagen ID4s have been made to be bi-directional capable just recently. And they actually backdated all their other older models to be bi-directional as well. But it's still in its early phases and they're doing, you know, a, a pilot with PG&E with the Ford Lightning. So um, backing up the solar and being able to then even feed your stored energy in that battery to the grid mm -hmm. and sell it to the utility to make some money. This is all coming, but it's all very new. So um, there's... Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say it sounds really exciting and uh, yeah, looking forward to more of this on the market. Um, Jim had a question about your bi-directional charging. Does one need house wiring modification for the bi-directional charging? Not, no, not with the capability that my car has and the Kia AV6 has. You're just using that adapter plugging in a regular extension cord and running it to your home. So eventually, um, and there are some on the market now, I think Ford and GM have this whole energy system. Um, so it's a, a different kind of charger than the regular just electric vehicle charger. It's a bi-directional charger and those are just coming out and that would require different wiring. Um, yeah. So, um you know, part of what we saw in your garage, we saw two different heat pumps. We saw the heat pump water heater right next to part of your heat pump HVAC system. And I think that there was some confusion about whether those two were working together, but those are two separate systems just located next to each other. Right. But, uh, Netta was interested in um, what it is that cleans the air in your home. So the... Um, heat pump that just does the cooling and heating in your home has um, extra air filtering, an extra filter that works to filter the air before it comes into your house. So it really helps to keep your air cleaner than a traditional furnace, um, which, you know, I don't know. I don't even know if they had filters in the traditional furnace. Well, I guess you would, so the heat pump has the filter as part of it, and it's a very you know, big, thick filter that does a lot of work. You know, so the gas furnace, you would just have the filter coming out of your, um, where the air comes down, that unit, you know, up, up high. But um, so with the heat pump, the filter is inside the, the actual appliance. 
So Andina was interested in what is the brand of induction cooktop that you have? Well, it's funny, um, you know, we we didn't have a lot of money for a fancy induction cooktop, but we went down to um, an appliance store and they had a, um, a, a used unit that had been a floor model. So we bought that and it's a box. So it was a, you know, an early model box, but it's great. And so the last question I wanted to ask is how often do you have to reseal your marmoleum? You know, I, I don't think we, we have never resealed it. Ours, um, you know, just kind of, it's like a puzzle that you put the pieces in and it goes down and we've never, you don't have to reseal, reseal it. Okay. So there's some questions that um, I didn't get to that hopefully you can um, spend some time down in the Q&A so that we can move on to the next thing. But thank you so much, Sue. Okay. Thank you. So speaking of bi-directional charging, do you happen to have a Kia EV9? Well, with a Wallbox Quasar 2 bi-directional charger, you can charge your EV9 at home while also getting backup power saving on your utility bill and earning passive income. The Wallbox Quasar 2 gets you five times the energy at half the price of a standard home battery. Bidirectional Energy has partnered with the California Energy Commission to offer up to 75% discount on a charger and installation. And you can learn more and sign up at bidirectional.energy forward slash reserve. Okay, now we're gonna visit Tom's really cute cottage right on Tamales Bay. With the help from his energy consultant friend, Peter, Tom upgraded this tiny cottage to, a, to passive home standards. Let's take a look. I'm Tom, this is Peter Waring who has helped me as an energy consultant on doing energy efficiency and, and electrification upgrades. And he's gonna help explain some of the, the improvements that we've done here. I've had this place for over 35 years. Originally, this was a one room cabin with just a tiny bathroom. And to provide some expansion of area and comfort, this two story addition was added. I've tried to do things honoring the origins of this place. Altogether, it was really the desire to make this a comfortable, cozy place to enjoy this beautiful environment. But also, I wanted to do what I could to help sustain the environment. As part of that effort, we planted native pollinating plants on the hillside here. It's a nice range of local natives. Ceanothus, yellow gum plant, coastal strawberries, yeah, this is the Point Reyes Silver Tassel. Very, very local native. So let me show you around. For the addition, we used uh, shiplap siding, which matched the old original building by reusing old salvage wood from a Victorian in San Francisco that was torn down many years ago. Another priority was to get a good R value and to have a well-sealed envelope, our value being high insulation value. Sealing all the cracks on the old building and then on the new building. We also used double pane windows throughout the new construction as well as replacing all the windows on the old building. And then we put rigid foam insulation on the exterior when we did the re-roof of the old building and the new roof. So you see we've got a fairly wide trim piece here where the roof has sandwiched underneath it, the rigid foam insulation above the, the roof deck itself. All right, so let's come inside. We also took advantage of the fact that we had a very old acoustic tile ceiling, probably the original, the first kind they ever made. And we took it out and we exposed the open beams Essentially, we have the open beam ceiling with insulation inside and rigid foam above it. Then we covered them with pine and then a double pane skylight there for some additional light. So another priority on the installation was the walls. And in order to accomplish that, we first took off 
the old paneling and then did sealing with caulk on the inside of the exterior shiplap as well because again it was pretty darn leaky and then after the sealing we put bad insulation inside of the inside framing then a vapor barrier and then put the original paneling back and then after that we put this fireplace brick which helps retain heat in addition to reusing the existing paneling we also put in a maple floor which we were able to recycle from an old gymnasium that was demolished. So here's the addition. We wanted to add to the potential to keep the place nice and cozy and retain heat well. And part of that whole approach was to do a passive solar design. All the double pane windows and their orientation and sizing is to optimize solar gain so that during the day we capture plenty of this solar that's, that's available so much of the time. And then we have matched with that the proper amount of thermal mass that's made up of concrete and tile so that the thermal mass retains that heat that's gathered during the day and then radiates it back at night. And then with the place well insulated with you know extra thick walls with plenty of insulation, thorough sealing on the inside, it is really effective for capturing and retaining heat. Having a tight envelope, meaning air sealed and good insulation, is the first thing you want to do, the low hanging fruit. And then when it comes to windows, since they are expensive, you want to think twice and make sure you do the windows that count the most. In this case, we got the south and westward facing ones for solar heat gain. That's not always what you want. In other situations, you want to have a slow, low solar heat gain. This spiral staircase allows the space for the heat to rise to the upstairs bedroom. So that's really nice, particularly for, for cool nights when the heat radiates up. So once the addition was built and we were tight envelope, both air sealing and insulation in the new addition and in the older part of the house, then Tom proceeded to electrify and replace his gas appliances with electric ones. So come take a look and we'll show them to you. One of the first things Tom did for electrification was to replace his gas propane fired cooktop with induction heating. People are really catching on to how easy induction heating, how well it works. No matter whether you're cooking with gas or cooking with electricity, it's important to have a range hood because there are gases and grease and so forth that come off of your cooking process that you don't want to be breathing in. And it's important when you do a range hood to have it vented to the outside. And we can tell that that's the case here because we have this duct going right out to the wall. With the combination of the tight envelope and the passive solar, this place needs very little heat. And what Tom did was he switched off his gas heating and electrified using a heat pump. There's a compressor outside and then there's a fan coil in here. And this one fan coil is enough to heat up the entire place both the older single story and because of the open stairway, the heat goes upstairs. Because of the sea breezes, Tom rarely uses his heat pump space conditioning for cooling, but there are occasional hot days when he does. And that's a nice thing about heat pump space conditioning. It gives you heating and it gives you cooling and it does it both of them three or four or five times more efficiently than the best gas. Tom had a gas fireplace and then he later switched over when he got his heat pump space conditioning to having a decorative fireplace here, which also has the option to provide a little bit of heat. Back over here is where the vent of the original wood-burning fireplace stood over here with its vent going through the roof. So as part of the overall energy efficiency effort, of course we wanted to also take care of one of the simple measures of reducing lighting energy use. Today we have really significant advances in LEDs. For example, now they have bulbs that mimic the old style, which work well in, for example, this Lincoln style, old vintage, or this stained glass. The new LEDs work well in just about any type of situation. In general, when you go for LED, you're gonna have a bulb that lasts 10 times as long and uses 1 10th the electricity, so it's a great deal. So an additional item as part of Electrification was to replace the gas hot tub with an electric one. All right, so there's solar on the top of the west facing and also south facing roof of the addition. 
And here's where the solar ties into the equipment, the inverter. And then also right here is where the charger is for electric vehicle. So one of Tom's plans for the future is to do battery backup to go along with the PV. And the advantage of that is A, when the PG&E grid goes down, he's gonna still have power. And B, he can use that energy that he stored up during the daytime at night. So thanks for visiting my home. And it feels good to honor this beautiful environment by doing what I can to sustain it. And here's a little reminder from Dante. Nature is the art of God. Thank you, Tom and Peter. Um, that was wonderful, be beautiful cottage and, and welcome. So uh, first of all, passive house guidelines are heavy on insulation. And we saw that the walls in the new addition are constructed extra thick. Um, when you added extra insulation to the old part of the cottage, did you keep the walls the same thickness or did you bulk them out? Well, uh, you know, they were, they were actually the old original two by four redwood, uh, uh, which, you know, basically it was not really economically practical to remove, essentially remove those and replace them with mm -hmm. two by sixes. We would essentially had to take in the building. So uh, we did our best with what we had in particular, uh, you know, with caulking from the inside, you know, sealing it very thoroughly from the inside and the outside, and then putting on the insulation uh, and then paneling that. Um, you know, that was a, that was a reasonable way to get, get the best done with, with a reasonable expense. And let me underscore that Tom actually did continuous rigid foam on the outside before he put that recycled ship lap on and continuous insulation, even a relatively small amount of it does a huge amount of insulating because it breaks up the thermal bridging that the two by fours or whatever you have for the studs in your wall actually transmit heat in and out of the house. So if you can have a continuous layer that goes across all those, it definitely cuts down heat loss and gain. And he did the same thing on the roof. And if you're ever anticipating putting PV on your roof, take a good look at the roof. If it's gonna to need to be re-roofed any more time in the near future, you wanna make sure and re-roof it and put in some continuous foam up there before you put your solar panel brackets down, because then it's gonna to to not only last, but also it's like putting a cap on your head, keep yourself warm, keep your house warm for a, a long time to come. Thanks for that great tip. So Teresa is curious about the recycled wood that you used both on the outside of your house and as your flooring. How do you access recycled wood? Did you do it through your contractor? Um, actually, I did some searching. Um, I put out the word uh, to people that I know that are, that are involved in construction. Um, and I, I essentially uh, also looked at some of the salvage yards uh, in the area. And, uh, you know, it was really by word of mouth more than anything that I found on those particular items. So now, well, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's well worth the effort because if you can keep reusing something that was already built and whatever embodied energy it has, if you can use it again, that's definitely the way to go. Even better than the highest tech uh, new product that takes a lot of energy to create. So Netta's interested in where you got the electric fireplace. Yeah, um, you know, there's actually a place called electricfireplaces.com where they make them available. And, and it's, it's really interesting uh, that uh, one of the companies that uh, actually makes a lot of fireplace logs, Duraflame, uh, is now in the electric fireplace business uh, because they can see where the trends are going. And, and I'm really surprised, frankly, at how, really how nice of the ambience it provides. They, they, they do a pretty amazing job of uh, creating the look of the fire. There was a question that I saw that it disappeared, but I'm kind of curious. So, you know, your house is, is because of all the passive house um, strategies that you've used, your um, electricity footprint is probably pretty small, but then you have a hot tub. So tell us about the, the hot tub electric footprint. Yeah, um, you know, one of the key things with, with a hot tub is that you insulate it really well. And, um, and, and you know, if you use 220 power for a hot tub, that 
improves the efficiency, lessens the amount of electricity uh, you use. So I did that when I, you know, upgraded to the electrical uh, hot tub. And uh, and then the other thing is that water retains heat well. So uh, when you insulate a body of hot water, it, the electricity demand is is really not that bad. And then again, we've got uh, solar on the roof. So, uh, you know, it's it's really pretty doable. And you can program your electric heating for your hot tub so that it does that during the daytime when the electricity mm -hmm. is abundant, not at night when it's less available. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. Um, so I need to move on to the next thing in the program, but thank you guys so much. And um, there's some questions in the Q&A if you could linger down there and, and and answer any of the questions that I didn't get to. Sure, glad to. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, now a message from another one of our amazing sponsors, Angaro and Sons. Plumbing, heating, and cooling has been serving Marin since 1932. They install and repair green home features such as heat pump water heaters, heat pump HVAC systems, rooftop solar, radiant floors, EV charging stations, and more. Contact Ungaro for quality workmanship and instant quotes. And visit their website for special time-sensitive offers like an amazing 0% financing for up to five years for HVAC, electrical, and plumbing work. This offer is good through the end of 2024. Now, I'm sure many of you are curious about or inspired to do green home upgrades. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Now, I'm pleased to introduce Mark Chabria from Marin County's sustainability team, who's here with us to share up-to-date information on where to find rebates and free planning services to make these projects way more affordable. Take it away, Mark. All right, thank you so much, Gretchen, and hi, everyone. I'm Mark Chabria, Program Coordinator for the County of Marin Sustainability Team. So our team at the county runs a number of different programs that support the county's climate action plan. Um, including a lot of great resources for Marin homeowner, homeowners like uh, the Electrify Marin rebate program. So we just have a quick presentation for you tonight about some resources that can help you make your home a greener place. Um, so just a quick overview of what I'm going to share. First, uh, I want to give some updates about the long-awaited Inflation Reduction Act rebates we've been waiting quite a while for those, and they've finally started to roll out here in California. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Electrify Marin's new resource hub, which is a really great place to get a lot of your home upgrade questions answered. Um, and I'll show you some rebate and contractor directories, which can be really helpful um, when you're getting your project started. Um, and then finally, some information on energy audits and concierge services that can really do a lot of the hard work and heavy lifting for you um, when you're planning your uh, the future of your home energy. Um, so <laughs> because we've been waiting in anticipation for these rebates, um, for a long time, I want to start with that. So, um, you know, I was hoping that they'd be fully rolled out by the time we did this tour, but once again, they are not. Um, but the first phase of the inflation reduction rebates um, has started to become available in California. So earlier this month, rebates for energy upgrades for multifamily properties became available. Um, and we're told that the rebates for single family homes will be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we do have some details about what those are gonna look like. So the initial phase of rebates is only gonna be for heat pump HVAC projects, uh, for heating and cooling your home. Um, and rebates for other projects are, are supposed to be coming later in the year during phase two of the rebate program rollout. Um, so that Inflation Reduction Act tax credits of $2,000 that have already been available um, will continue, but these rebates are an additional incentive to make it easier to switch your gas furnace to a heat pump system. So these rebates are for low and moderate income households. And so what does that really mean? Um, here in Marin County, uh, for a two-person household, just using that as an example, um, low income would mean uh, 
household income below one hundred and twenty-five thousand three hundred and fifty dollars um, a moderate income two-person household would be above one hundred and twenty-five thousand, but less than two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars combined household income so a lot of us do fit into these categories these rebates really are available to a lot of households here in Marin um, so the low income rebate is eight thousand dollars and the moderate income rebate is four thousand um, dollars for households that are above those income thresholds uh the tech clean california program still will have a rebate of a thousand dollars for heat pump hvac and uh, electrified marin rebates are here for you as well um, so when you consider you know the additional incentives that you can stack on top of this like the two thousand dollar federal tax credit from IRA and local rebates from Electrify Marin, the rebates are getting pretty huge. And, you know, if you've been thinking about getting a heat pump for your home, uh, it's it's about to become a much better time to do it. Um, also important to know that in order to access these rebates, you need to work with a contractor that is enrolled in a program called Tech Clean California. Um, there are a lot of contractors serving Marin who are enrolled, and I'm sure that list is growing fast. Um, and in just a minute, I'm going to show you some ways to find contractors who are enrolled in that program. All right. So moving on to some resources here, we, you know, we really understand that doing home upgrades uh, can be complicated and it's a, it's a lot of work. And there, there are a ton of questions that come up as you start thinking about moving away from fossil fuels and upgrading appliances. I think really the biggest question that comes up is like, where do I even begin, right? Um, everybody's home is unique and and everybody has different priorities and and we all have different levels of uh, resources available. So it can be hard to find um, one size fits all answers, right? Um, but there's definitely something for everybody uh, among the tools and resources that I'm going to share with you. Um, so to help with all of this complexity, uh, Electrify Marin has launched a central resource hub on the County of Marin's website. And, and the goal of that is to really have a lot of answers for a lot of your questions all in one place. Um, so you will find information on rebates, guides on how to get started, uh, resources on electric vehicles and info about solar, uh, resources around electric landscaping tools. Um, it's a work in progress and a living resource, so we're always adding more um, information and resources to it. So definitely recommend um, visiting marincounty.org slash electrify. Um, and some of the very helpful things that you'll find through the Electrify Marin Hub are contractor and rebate directories. So finding a contractor can be tough and, and sorting out all of the various rebates that are available for these kinds of projects can be even tougher. Um, so we're really lucky to have directories that can help. And um, the first service that I want to highlight is called The Switch is On. It's a website. Uh, dedicated to making it easier to transition uh, from gas to electricity. And they have a great contractor directory, uh, which can be filtered by project type and by zip code. Um, also shows the uh, professional certifications for each contractor. So in this little, little picture that you probably can't see very well, um, I did a search for um, heat pump HVAC contractors in my San Rafael zip code. Um, and I specifically wanted to find contractors that are part of the Tech Clean California network so I can get those IRA rebates. Um, and it came up with like 57 contractors that serve San Rafael. Um, and you can see that first contractor that came up, there's a little um, green and blue logo under their name that shows they're a part of that tech network. Um, so the switches on also has a great rebate finder tool that you can plug in your zip code to to see what um, rebates are available for your project. Um, and then just uh, a snip of another great resource that you can find. This is the um, residential rebate and incentive finder uh, on the MCE website. Um, you could plug in your zip code and the type of project that you're looking to complete, um, and you'll get a comprehensive list of related incentives. So for this search, I put in heat pump water heater as my project type and San Rafael is my location and it uh, produced a, a list of several different rebates. 
But <laughs> what if you don't really know what kind of project you're trying to get started with and, and really trying to figure out where to begin? So services like energy audits and energy concierge services can can really look at the big picture of your home energy situation um, and try to help you figure out how to prioritize upgrades or really where to get started. So um, I wanna highlight three services in particular that people have found really helpful, um, but you can find more options if you visit the Electrify Morin hub. So each of these really provides a different level of support for homeowners. Um, so first, I want to mention Home Intel. It's a free energy saving program, um, free for PG&E customers. It gives you a smart audit and a personal energy coach. Um, I've participated in this program, and I got a ton of information that helped me reduce my energy use um, based on the Home Intel analysis of my um, of my energy use from PG&E data. Um, the service also includes an analysis of your electric service panel and can give you some insight that can help you uh, avoid a service panel upgrade. Um, and then they also provide recommendations around electrification. So remember, this is a free service for PG&E customers. Really, that means that you're already paying for it through your monthly bill. So great idea to take advantage of it. Um, the next one I want to mention is Home Energy Score. Um, Home Energy Score gives you an in-person home assessment that uh, considers a number of factors like your insulation levels, um, your window configurations, your appliances, and energy use to help you figure out the best ways to lower your energy bill, um, to get away from fossil fuels, and to make your home more comfortable. So this service usually costs around $350. Um, but you can get a $200 rebate from Bayren. Uh, it's really a low cost for, for an actual in-person service, and it's uh, very specific to your, tailored and specific to your home. Um, and then last but not least, um, you know, Quick Carbon really is the most comprehensive of these services, um, and it is also free for homeowners. They are a full concierge-style uh, service that will complete a remote assessment of your home um, and make recommendations for efficiency and electrification upgrades. Um, they will connect you with contractors that are in their trusted network. Um, they will also review those contractor bids for you so you can feel like they're, you know, for review them for fairness. Um, their service helps you navigate the various rebate opportunities as well um, to figure out what can offset your costs. So um, we've seen a lot of homeowners go through this program with a whole lot of success. And um, Cooper from Quick Carbon is, um, is here with us in the chat and can answer all your questions about that program. So there's a whole lot to explore on the um, Electrify Marin hub. So be sure to check it out. But we're also happy to hear from you in our office. So I've put all our contact info here on the screen. Um, and I really want to thank everyone for joining the tour this year. Uh, next, I'm just going to go to a quick video um, from the county's sustainability team. The Marin County Sustainability Team, here to help you accomplish your home sustainability goals. Visit Electrify Marin's new resource hub to get your electrification questions answered. Subscribe to our newsletter for updates on funding opportunities and future events, like our solar and battery storage webinar on November 13th. Visit marincounty.gov slash electrify. Thanks so much, Mark, and um, and the whole team at the uh, the County of Marin uh, Sustainability Team. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, now we're going to drop in on a Marin renter, Alexis, to learn strategies that she's using to green her home. My name is Alexis Feynman and I'm a renter in San Anselmo. I have lived in San Anselmo for seven or eight years, but I grew up in the Ross Valley, so this is definitely home. 
and I'm a pretty committed climate advocate, climate activist, and I'm very involved in local climate policy here in San Anselmo and um, to, a, to an extent in the county and beyond. So um, this is my, my log cabin. It's a literal log cabin. I've heard it's one of two in San Anselmo. The other is the, um, the dugout bar by Memorial Park. So as a renter, it can obviously be really hard to make certain decisions around uh, the property and the home that you rent. I got really lucky in that my cabin actually has a, a heat pump mini split heater. So it heats and cools, it's a fan, it's unbelievable, it's super efficient. And the whole unit gets cooled in like three minutes or heated in three minutes when I turn it on. Um, in the place I was renting prior, I would use mostly window AC and um, you know to, to cool during the summer. One of the things to note is that even though it's important to get mini splits, it's also really important to conserve and be efficient with the energy used when cooling, especially on hot days. It can constrain the grid. The grid is dirtier during certain hours in the afternoon when more energy is on, uh, the energy demand increases. So um, trying to conserve energy from four to nine. And then across from the mini split, it, it blows right into these um, beautiful sliding glass doors. And um, obviously that's one of the really poor insulation. So the heat or the cool can just go straight out. Um, and so what I try to do is I actually got um, insulating shades that are were about $30. They're adhesive, so you don't have to drill. It's really great for renters. And they just add an extra layer of, um, of insulation to help conserve energy and keep the cold air that's blowing actually in the unit. All right, so this is my kitchen. It's small but mighty. Um, and it does actually have a gas, uh, a gas range and cooktop, which is actually not super common in ADUs. So, um, as someone who's trying to use less gas, what I've done is I have an induction cooktop here, uh, which is great. And then I have a toaster oven here, which even if the big one was electric, I think I'd use a toaster oven anyways. It works super well. Um, so between these two, I pretty much almost never have to turn this on. Um, and, you know, in addition to the climate reasons why we maybe want to, you know, not cook with gas, um, living in a small unit, the impacts to indoor air quality are actually much more pronounced. So, you know, I'm cooking where I'm working and, and sleeping and socializing and whatever. So, um, it's an extra incentive to really switch electric and make sure that the indoor air quality is, um, stays great. And, um, out here right now I have my electric vehicle, which as you can see is an e-bike. Um, I, uh, Purchasing an EV was not really financially an option for me um, when I was in the market for an EV. So um, I got an e-bike instead, and I would say that the majority of my trips are actually on, on bike, which is um, a lot of fun. So in terms of um, the e-bike, if you're a renter, a couple of things to note. Um, if you're upstairs, if you live upstairs and you don't have secure bike parking downstairs, um, being sensitive to the weight, there's some good lower weight options because you'll have to be carrying it up and down. So um, I used to garden a lot. I'm not super actively gardening right now, but there's a couple of tricks as a renter that have helped um, like save water while gardening and make sure that plants are getting adequately watered. Um, one of the things that I did was I took some old uh, kombucha bottles, took a glass drill bit and drilled a little hole in the bottom. And I just leave these in the planters. And then I have a gray water bucket and I just kind of pour it in and then the water drips out slowly through the hole. So it's essentially like a, I call it a decentralized gray water drip irrigation system. All right, so when it comes to um, food prep and cooking, I try and buy a lot of bulk. So I have jars with, you know, legumes and grains and sugar up there. Um, Good Earth is, you know, about a five minute bike ride, 10 minute walk down the road. So it's, um, it's really easy to buy bulk. Uh, and in terms of, which helps cut down, which, Buying bulk helps cut down on plastic waste, of course. Um, in terms of composting, I don't have, you know, an outdoor garden compost setup. Um, so what I do is I put actually all my compost in the freezer, in a bin in the freezer, and then just take it out once a week prior to garbage day. Another great way to save energy, especially in the summer, uh, is just to use a clothesline. Right now it's in the shade, but it does get some sun and um, things dry super quick. So one final thing about being a renter who's you know really committed to reducing um, one's carbon footprint is a lot of the time the conversation is around you know buy this buy that etc. And I think as um, as renters it's you know it's hard like we can't buy the heat pump we can't purchase the solar panels um, and so the types of changes that we can make are different. But um, one of the things I just wanted to call out is that you know living in a small space and living light and you know 
purchasing secondhand, all that kind of stuff is actually really, really important. Um, and I think that there's a lot to celebrate uh, for Marin's renters in terms of the ways that we can um, that we can be contributing to the movement beyond you know purchasing things that are just out of our, our control to do. Um, so in terms of you know inspiration, I mean I think um, there's some great resources locally. I joined Resilient Neighborhoods uh, a number of years ago and being in a cohort of people who are all committed to taking uh, action to address climate change in their lives is a really great way to learn about new things and to have some accountability and actually making some switches. That was partly what inspired me to actually get the e-bike. Um, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about, you know, how do we get systems to change on a much bigger picture, like through policy, um, you know, locally, regionally, state, etc. And um, there are always a lot of questions like, oh, you know, do, what is the, is it good to focus on personal behavior, personal actions? And I think it's a both and. I mean, I think that in actually going through some of the steps, trying to live, um, you know, more ecologically light, a more sustainable lifestyle, it's helped me better understand the ways in which our systems need to shift and adapt to really meet the moment that we're in. Um, I would say there's also great resources in uh, Sustainable Marin. Um, Green Change has a really active listservs and threads. People are always sharing tips. Uh, and then many, if not all, uh, towns and cities in Marin have a a climate action commission that's um, filled with people who are really dedicated to uh, taking action to curb the climate crisis. Thank you so much, Alexis, for um... Well, for your service to the community, uh, also for modeling the way and really bringing a renter's can-do perspective. And uh, Alexis is in the chat. If you want to uh, ask her any questions, uh, you can find her there. Now, a message from another sponsor, uh, SolarCraft. Uh, SolarCraft delivers solar and battery storage for homes and businesses. SolarCraft is 100% employee-owned and one of the largest green tech employers in the North Bay, celebrating 40 years in business. The team is proud to have installed over 9,000 solar energy systems in Marin, Sonoma, and Napa County. Wow, that is amazing. Thank you, SolarCraft. Um, so now we're going to take a look at David's home in Novato, which looks out onto beautiful open space. On the day of the video shoot, the weather was really hot. His solar panels were creating ample electricity while his home stayed nice and cool, exactly the combo you want during heat waves. I'm David. Um, this is our 1969 vintage house in Novato. Uh, we've been here for about 20 years and we moved here because it's on open space and a lovely area with lots of wildlife and the ability to plant the native plants we have in this yard. So we feel like we're part of nature here and do our best to be a friendly neighbor to the animals in the area. So why did we do all these things? Well, I guess since I've been a kid, I've been an advocate of solar power and reducing the use of fossil fuels. It really has not been a secret for many, many years that, that pumping carbon dioxide into the air is going to change the climate and probably not in a good way. So I've always throughout my life tried to adopt whatever technologies uh, there are to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, starting with hybrid cars, and even before that, high mileage cars. And of course, the house was the, the last great uh, place to advance to a non-fossil fuel lifestyle, and so that's what we've done here. So we'll start by showing you what's happening in the garage. All right, well, I guess we start with the solar equipment that's in the garage. It's not really a big impact in terms of space. We have our garbage in front of the battery and the recycling basically tucked underneath. We've got the inverter and this is called a backup interface which negotiates between the solar panels and this 16 kilowatt hour battery that stores our excess solar, keeps us going at night. 
We've chosen to essentially try to eliminate our use of any grid power. A big part of electrification goes on in the garage. So, of course, the washing machine is electric. The dryer we had in here was gas. When we had gas removed, we obviously had to move to an electric dryer. The most efficient way to dry laundry is not with any sort of dryer, but with a hanging rack. So we took some old plumbing pipe and a chain from the hardware store and hung this so that we could uh, hang things very conveniently. So this is our heat pump water heater. There's a water tank, a conventional water tank here. And then that black area is uh, a heat pump, or in other words, an air conditioner that runs in reverse and pumps heat into the water. One thing we've done to save water is added to the system a recirculating pump that pushes hot water through the house so that you don't have to run the water for a long time to get water warm enough to use in the shower. So that that does not run all the time, we have it connected through a smart home plug that we can control with our smartphone or manually if you're in the garage. And that will turn the circulating pump on and off when we need it. A few years ago, we had an electrician come and put in a 240 volt outlet here and we placed a Costco a car charger on the wall here so that with the cord at about 25 feet we can charge cars inside the garage or outside the garage. During the middle of the day between our panels and sometimes our battery we're using only homegrown solar power to, to fuel our cars. So another thing to think about um, if, if and when you're replacing your garage door um, you've got the option of wood which is a great insulator but also combustible. Um, and there are various types of steel doors. We chose insulated, which keeps the garage cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. And within the steel doors, your conventional fiberglass insulation to keep the, the uh, garage comfortable. So what we're looking at is a, a window that replaced a fireplace we had many years ago. One of the first things we did was evaluate whether the fireplace was worth it. And we thought that that was just not worth it considering the cost and especially considering the fact that a lot of the smoke coming out of chimneys in this neighborhood just settles. So instead, we have this beautiful view out the window, uh, obviously double plane rated for a wildland urban interface. And along with the window, we put in this new bamboo shelf along with flooring in the entire room and a lovely view. So here in the kitchen, we did something that we saw in some of the other green home videos, but we'd done it years ago for a little over a hundred bucks, sometimes less. You can get a single induction burner and put it on top of a couple elements on your existing stove. Uh, even though we were already electric, when you cook with induction, you're heating the pot instead of the burner itself. If you do this, take out the elements underneath your induction burner. If you don't do that and accidentally turn on one of those elements, you'll be cooking your burner. And from personal experience, I can tell you the smell is not pleasant. Now I'll show you the other part of the heat pump system, which is underneath this deck, uh, shaded out of the sun and, and really not taking up any space we'd otherwise need. So this is the condenser portion of the heat pump system. You can tell the fans are not spinning right now. It's three o'clock. It's a little over 90 degrees here in Novato, but we don't need the air conditioning yet because uh, we have a pretty well insulated attic. And we also have uh, done our best to try to cool the house in the morning. So we need this in the afternoon, generally run by solar and uh, battery power, but still we try to use it sparingly so that we don't waste anything even if it's free. All right, well, let me show you a couple of things we've done for fire hardening in the backyard. We're on open space here, so we do worry a considerable amount about fire, starting with trimming the trees every couple of years to keep the branches away from the house. So here we have a, a standard vent, but inside is Vulcan vent material. It's designed to essentially melt and seal up if it's exposed to any heat so that it prevents embers during a fire from getting into the house. Another thing we've done is obviously the bay window that we put in has double pane glass rated for wildland interface. Uh, we replaced the windows in either, either side. The house as it was, was fairly fire resistant with stucco walls and a clay tile roof. 
There used to be a plastic door here when we bought the house. So we replaced that with a steel clad door and uh, we made sure that the threshold is tightly sealed against the door so that nothing can get underneath and we've got seals all around the door so that if any fire gets near this it's not going to set the door on fire and shouldn't get any embers into the crawl space of the house. So this little pipe sticking out of the ground was our gas line. Uh, you can see it's capped off. It was really easy to become a non-gas customer. We called PG&E and said we had no use for a gas line or a meter. And they said, well, we'll come and take it out. And they did. And uh, saving all four, $4 a month just to have a meter sitting there doing nothing. These are former pickle barrels that we got from Friedman's up in Petaluma. They cost all of $20 each. We connect them in a sort of a linear way all the way up to this gutter it fills the first barrel which fills the second barrel etc we get a lot of rain during the winter a period when there's no rain and then another period of rain so we fill these several times over the course of the year and then drain them as needed thank you for visiting our house i hope we've given you some helpful ideas for improving your home um, i do want to tell everyone that it really is easy to become fully electric. It hasn't really impacted our lifestyle in any negative way. If anything, it's been positive. And of course, we feel a lot better uh, about our role in the world, knowing we're not contributing to a, a global crisis. So again, thanks for coming by. Thanks so much, David. And I, I really just want to um highlight what Cooper said in the chat about uh, woohoo, uh, the capping of the gas pipe, maybe the highlight uh, of the tour. Should uh, have a party. For, yeah. for me, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really curious about your recirculation pump. Uh, so can you tell us about your kind of before and after experience of, of having a hot water recirculation pump? We've had it a while, so I'm not sure I can remember back in the day, but we did have a bucket in the shower. We still do, actually, even for the small amount we need to run the shower for. But there used to be a lot of water being hauled out of the shower just to not to waste it, send it down the drain. But now with this pump, everyone's a lot happier. You know, you pretty much instantly get hot water out of the faucets. There are very sophisticated systems. Some people can install... Uh, three sets of pipes to their bathrooms and, and and have a very, and I think a lot of commercial buildings have this uh, sort of a three-way system where the hot water is constantly running. But we didn't feel that that was very environmentally responsible because the hot water obviously is going to cool as it runs through the system. So we, we really have a very lean and, and efficient way of just getting the hot water to the uh, place we need it when we need it. And that's a uh, obviously a small fraction of the day. So having that that recirculating yeah. pump hooked up to a spark plug really works well for us. So yeah, I think that one of the questions was about like uh they have an old they have an old recirculation pump, but they were curious about your the more modern one. But I think that what they didn't understand is that the programmable aspect is your smart plug that you added to the recirculation pump. It wasn't a part of the recirculation pump. No, they're completely separate items. That We have smart plugs running a bunch of things in the house, uh, lights and, and other items. So it, that seemed like a great way to have the benefit of that pump. They do come with timers, but even then, uh, you know, your days are not predictable and routine. So um, this seemed like a better option than having a timer. So what was the process of getting pg e to remove your gas meter? A phone call. That uh, was it? <laughs> that was about all you needed. Um, I was surprised. Um, but uh, I guess their reasoning is they're going to make money on us, whether it's electricity or gas. They don't really make it difficult to just turn off your gas service. So I've heard that portable induction cooktops are a lot noisier than an induction range. And so I was curious what your experience with that has been. It, it, it has a fan that runs while you're using it and a little bit after just to cool it down. Um, so for sure, the voices have to be raised 
in the house when we're cooking with that thing. But it, you know, it's not something that's going to come to damage your hearing. Okay. So we have a few questions about the pickle barrels, how many gallons they are. Do you actually use the water in the picker, pickle barrels for irrigation? Do you drain it with a hose or something more complicated? Um, I think they have about 30 or 40 gallons each. Um, we use them in a couple ways. Sometimes we'll drain them to a lower part of the property to do uh, deep watering of the trees that we have in the back. And sometimes we just uh, will drain them to a, an area of our front yard that is also slightly lower than the barrels. They develop a pretty good, I think the term is head when they're full. So there's enough pressure to push the water through a garden hose to a spot we might need it. Sometimes we just drain them into a, a small watering can and, and hand water some of the more delicate plants we have in the yard. Great. Well, thank you so much, David. Um, I'm not sure if there's some questions that I didn't get to, but um, I appreciate you if you would just drop down and make sure I got it all. Sounds good. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're gonna hear a word from Resilient Neighborhoods. I think that the um, the sound is not working. Could you please play this again with the sound on? We seem to be having some technical issues getting the Resilient uh, uh, Neighborhoods video playing. Maybe we'll just give it another minute or maybe another five seconds. What okay. do you think, Amy? <laughs> sure. Okay, I'm hearing that the sound is, is unable to work. So I just wanna um, shout out to Resilient Neighborhoods. Um, they offer free online workshops to help you reduce your carbon footprint and prepare for climate related emergencies. And they have some upcoming workshops for you to check out. Um, so be sure to go to their website to see their upcoming offerings. So throughout this tour, you've heard homeowners recommend resources that really help them on their journey. And we have many of those resources posted at the Marin Green Home Tour website. Here's a sampling of a few you can find there. People like Sue Saunders were able to do so much cobbling together rebates and resources. I also wanna plug the website for a second reason. You can find a lot of the details on all of the homes that you saw today. The homeowners shared links, brands. Um, some of them shared the installers and contractors they used. And if you're interested, you can also check out many more homes from prior tours. Well, that just about wraps it up. But before we go, we've sent a post-event survey to your email and we'd be very grateful for your feedback. And thanks again so much uh, to our amazing sponsors for making this event free to everyone. Our champion sponsors, MCE, Marin Water, and the Marin Climate and Energy Partnership and to our advocate level sponsors, SolarCraft, Ungaro and Sons, Rock Rabbit, Bidirectional Energy, and the County of Marin's sustainability team. Thank you also to all of our other sponsors. Please take note of their names. These are great businesses that can help you plan your green home journey and the contractors that can install heat pump systems, update your electrical and design your remodels. These are also organizations that, that you can get involved in in your community, learning climate strategies with your neighbors or advocating for proactive climate policies in your community. Thank you to Divine Electrical, or sorry, Divine Electric, Marin Realtors, Sustainable Novato, Quit Carbon, Electrify My Home, 
Hassler Heating and Cooling, and Home Intel. We're grateful for the Marin cities and towns that are dedicated to accelerating the clean energy transition. And a big thank you as well to our fiscal sponsor, Sustainable Marin. So we're gonna keep the Q&A open for the next five minutes or so for any last minute questions you may have. And I wanna say thank you so much for attending the 2024 Marin Green Home Tour, and we look forward to seeing you next year.